What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I know it's been a few days since we have made a podcast, but the reason for that is, you know, me and my whole family came down with the Rona. Yes, that was very shocking um, that all of us, you know, uh, my grandson, you know, he tested first with it. And then me, my wife and my little girl, we went and got tested. My daughter went and got tested. Everybody got tested and everybody came back having, you know, uh, you know, the virus. Right now, my oldest daughter, she didn't get anything because she had it before, you know. So basically, if you had it before, you were kind of immune. So it was very interesting. I will say this, um, but I, I know I feel like I'm on the tail end of this thing. Um you know, I appreciate, you know, definitely the people that I did tell about this, our, our members, you know, I appreciate, you know, y'all, uh, well wishes and prayers and things like that. But, you know, like I said, I, I will say the first two, at least for me, the first two days of this thing sucked. I will say because of the body aches was intense. Uh, when people say, oh, it's just a common cold or it's the flu. That's a lie. I've had both and this is not it. Um, you know, now I didn't have what my me with my wife experienced though. You know, she experienced more of an intense uh, than I did. But I, I did have, like, say the the sweats was an oh annoying. You know, you sweat like you literally working out. That's how much you'd be sweating. Then after that, you know, you get up, go take your shower, everything. Man, so I'm experiencing then the chills and the fatigue and. I didn't have a cough. I didn't have the shortness of breath like everybody. I didn't, you know, I didn't lose my sense of taste, you know, or I didn't smell and none of that. But, you know, thank, thank God. Like I said, I feel like I'm on the tail end of it. So, you know, I said, let me get back to work here. I can't, I can't not work. You know, I'm a hard working black man, you know, and, and nobody else is going to do my work for me. Right. I mean, but shout out, shout out to everybody uh, out there who, who's hard workers as well. But let's get to this particular topic here. So, you know, as we're getting close to these midterms, you know, um, we know the Democrats are, are concerned, and rightfully so. The Democrats are concerned because black people aren't enthusiastic for them. And why is that? Because they didn't do anything for black people. If you keep disappointing people, if you don't not do right by people, eventually what may happen is that person going to say, wait a minute, I know you're not going to do nothing for me. So what is the point of actually showing up and doing anything for you? Right? So in Congress, because of this, you know, they always have to label when black people think for themselves because you know, black people can't think for themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, it, it has to be something else. Do you realize the most racist thing that white folks say about you is that, you and I are ignorant that we can't think for ourselves, that we need white people to think for us. Okay. And what happens is, uh, you, you Mzungus on the left feel that we're so dumb. We don't know anything as black people. We can't think for ourselves. They have to think for us. Understand that's the most basic plantation mentality, um, that they can have toward black people. So let's go. Now they said expert witnesses, they say, they said they warned members of Congress that misinformation targeting black voters is said likely intensify as the midterm elections unfold. So what is the misinformation y'all is talking about? Anytime black people question you, that's misinformation. Anytime black people say you didn't do nothing for us. Is that misinformation? They never really explain what misinformation is. Notice they keep throwing out the word misinformation. They throw out the word disinformation, but they never really explain what it is. Now they said a joy Cheney, it said the executive director of the national urban league, Washington bureau testified. Oh Lord, here we go. When you hear the national urban league, when you hear the national action network, when you hear NAACP, that's them boot licking, shoe shining, sell out black folk. That has nothing to do with us. Because why haven't they? Okay, if they want to ask some questions about why black people aren't voting for them, they can invite me to up there. I'll tell them why. I will tell them why. It has nothing to do with no misinformation. It has to do with reality for black people. But see, they don't want to invite black people like me to come tell them because I'm going to tell them what they ain't going to want to hear. They, anytime you see these black folks, that they ain't got a hair out of place. 
They dresses have the, the women's dress have the best of fabric. The men's suits have the best of fabric. I mean, boy, they look like a million dollars, don't they? All of them. All of them getting paid by white supremacy. All of them. So, so they claim that, oh, it's, it's an increasing number of disinformation campaigns that target black communities and the civil rights that have been long fought for. What are these campaigns and who are these people? Why are you speaking in the abstract? They say further, these disinformation attacks on black communities are also a broader attack on our democracy and a threat to national security of this nation. Once again, what are the attacks? Give us a, a PowerPoint of, of the attacks. We, we would like to know. We would like to know. Now, a representative GK Butterfield, a Democrat in North Carolina, say that misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation a threat to our democracy and the free, fair, and equitable access to the ballot every voter is entitled to. Let me tell you something. They love throwing out these words, but most people in America, when you just, when they just hear these words, they're like, what are you talking about? Because you're not explaining what it is. The way that the Democrat party is working, we had talked about them and called them the Democrat communist party is any criticism of them is misinformation. If you say you're not going to vote for them because they didn't do nothing specifically for black people, that's disinformation. You understand until you point out what it is. Now, before it was all Russia, 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 Russia. Now it's not, is it Russia again? Look like Russia got their hands full with something else right now. Correct. Now they continue to say the practice of misinforming voters has been weaponized and targeted at communities. They say of color by racist and anti-democratic actors who seek to intimidate voters of color, discourage them from participating in a democratic process. Um, what is this of color? Because we don't have no, it's, it's no such thing. It's no such thing as a people group called of color. Just say the people groups that you're talking about. And you say in anti-democratic actors, what, who are they? What are they doing? How are they intimidating somebody from going to the polls? Is anybody holding a gun to somebody's head and say, you better not go in there and vote? I haven't seen that in modern times. So what are you talking about? The fact is that let's call it what it is. Many of us that's speaking right now in, in, in new black media. Now, many of us, they're talking about us. Let's call that what it is. We're the people that they, they're targeting to. We're the people that they're shadow banning. We're the people that they want to make sure our content don't get out there like that because they don't want the masses to find out what's going on. You understand? They want to be in power and don't do nothing for black people. Black people got to understand, you know, you serve a purpose in America. I hope you know that your purpose in America is to still be a slave. Now you say, Phil, what do you mean by that? Your purpose is to still be a slave because you make a lot of money for a lot of corporations. You definitely set trends. You help a lot of people groups, you know, come over here through, through our struggle and our fight. And you have helped everybody, everybody under the sun you have helped. And the way the system works is you can't get anything because your position is slave. So when you ask for something or even dare to demand something, this is why even your Democrat friends get upset with you because you are a slave and you supposed to not get anything. You understand? And the only way we would give you something, unless you have an uprising that you do y'all realize that's the only reason we get something unless uprisings happen. Just like the slave revolts, you have to have a freaking uprising to get anything. You can't just ask your representatives and say, Hey, we need this as a community. No, you have to have an uprising. You have to terrify white America to get anything. The reason why you got the civil rights bills because of uprisings wasn't because of voting. The reason why you got the fair housing act is because of an uprising it wasn't because of voting. You understand the reason why 
things aren't like it was back in the 1950s because of uprisings. It wasn't because of voting. Voting has never produced any kind of justice for black people. None. You voted for your representatives, but your representatives are black faces that represent white supremacy. The people that came from the soil, the people that you knew from the neighborhoods that was fighting for the people. Those have been our greatest leaders, not none of these elected officials. Your, your Clyburns and, and your Maxine Waters and all these different black people, name them all. If you elected them, have you noticed none of them in the end have never been no good. And I'm not talking about, well, Hey, this individual did good for me and my family. We talking about as a collective for black people, the congressional black caucus is not for black people. It's a congressional black Democrat caucus. That's what it is. It's not for black people. And when you say that, how dare you say that? Because we have a lot, we have a lot of people in our community who's deaf, dumb, and blind. And I will say that's the majority of black people, deaf, dumb, and blind. They still have this. Long as I see a black face, I'm good. You know, and, and we have this, this asinine mentality in the black community. As long as a black face is selling us out, it's fine. But oh, if a white person do it, it's, we, we gonna, we gonna lose it. You know, if a black person kills us, I guess it's fine. Cause we don't react a certain way, but let a white person do it. Oh, we about to lose our minds. I thought black life supposed to matter. No matter who do it regardless. Right? So we don't have any true political representation. We don't have that at all. Now they said that the tactics that were cited were varied. It said as a creation of inauthentic social media accounts that posed as black influencers to a meme that targeted black. I don't use let me t- oh, let me, let me stop here. I'm gonna stop right here because I'm seeing something that we are gonna have to address too. And this is, this is a political conversation and what I'm about to have. What I'm looking at here, it says black and Latino. We have to say that anytime somebody address black people, it gotta be black period black. And you're not talking to black people at that point. Let me explain something to you, especially when you talk about black and Brown, you know, a lot of Negroes like to say that in the Democrat party. First of all, so-called Brown people, do not want to politically be attached to us. We just keeping it 100. What I'm saying when they created their caucus, they don't even call themselves Brown. Let's go there. They have a caucus right now called the congressional Hispanic caucus, not congressional Brown caucus, the congressional Hispanic caucus. They created their own caucus and separated themselves away from black people. If they really wanted to be on this black and brown politically, why didn't they go to congressional black caucus and say, Hey, let's form a caucus called the congressional black and brown caucus. Because since we so tied at the hip, let's just be in a caucus together. You notice they didn't do that. Why? because they do not want to be tied at the hip with black people because their issues aren't black people's issues at all. Okay. And our issues aren't their issues. So we cannot be tied at the hip with no other group politically. And they don't even call themselves Brown. They call them the they, they political figure said Hispanic. That's what their figure says. Okay. So all this Brown stuff out, who is Brown? Nobody is no label on any sense is called Brown. So I don't know who Brown people are. Okay. When they say, Oh, black and LGBT, LGBT is separate. Well, Hey, black people and Asians deal. No, no, no. The AAPI got their own caucus on the Hill. When it comes to politics, everybody else is separate away from black people. And that's choices they made. Black people not one time said, get the hell away from us. This is what they chose to do when they got their numbers up. When their numbers are low, oh, let me go around black people because they got more numbers and they can probably protect me. When they get their numbers up, they say, okay, we don't need y'all no more. We on our own. So this is why black people have to say, 
Hell no. I don't want to hear nothing about no black and LGBT. I don't hear nothing about no black and, and, and Asian. I don't want to hear nothing about no black. And uh, if you say Brown, I don't say who is Brown. I don't know who Brown is. There is no classification of person called Brown. Well, black and Latino. It, nope. It ain't no black and Latino unless they Afro Latino. If are they Afro Latinos? Who you talking about? Afro Latinos, were well, they just black then? I, I don't know who you're talking about. If you're not speaking about them, it's no, we not going to say, and isn't it? It's, it's no, and it's black. Because everybody else in America, the way America is set up is America is set up where everybody got to go for their own group. That's the way that, that's the way this country is set up. Now, if it was up to me and, it, and I would, if you say, Phil, what would you change about America? If you, if you was the president and you was in control, I would put America on the, on the, on the global system. And what I mean by the global system is that, in other countries, you just label as an, let's say you're an American. So the first time, let's say I, I went to Turkey one time, one, well, twice. They said your nationality, American. They didn't ask me my race. They just say I'm an American. I go to African countries. What's your nationality? American. They don't ask you your color. I would get rid of color. I would get rid of color real quick because color is used to discriminate. That's why I would, that's the first thing I'll get rid of in America because we are the one of the only countries that's so asinine backwards using color for everything and everybody else is using nationality. You know what I'm saying what I'm saying? So that, that would be the one thing I would get rid of. You can't get rid of people, get rid of people's ethnicity. No, but on, on, on labels in this country. Oh no, we all Americans. Ain't going to be none of this white, black, Hispanic. No, 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 no. All that, all that is used for is division period. That's what I, I say. Listen, why the hell on a financial application for a home do you got to put somebody's freaking color? All you need to know is their financial information. All this color stuff is used to, to discriminate. Just well, oh, okay, it's a white person. Make sure to give them this, or it's an Asian person. Make sure that black people. Ooh, let make sure to put them at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? So that'd be the first thing I would get rid of is that. But all this separate, you know, like these other groups want to be separated from us and that's fine. They can be separated from us if they would like to. But what I'm trying to tell y'all is don't ever allow nobody to pop up here with this black and Latino, black and uh, Asian, black and uh, LGBT, black and this, black and that. No, uh, uh-uh. because when, 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 when the rubber meets the road, it ain't no black and LGBT when, when, when the police shooting, uh, shooting somebody 15 times in the back is black. It ain't no, it ain't no black and uh, Asian. It ain't no black and uh, uh, brown. It ain't no, it's just black all the time. It's just black. And since it's just black, we got to make sure to enforce that. We ain't got no time to be uh, 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 holding on the hand of people that don't want to hold on the hand to us. They have made their choices and their decisions with their own caucuses. They caucus don't even come together with and do anything with us at all. So everybody made their choice. That's cool. I'm not mad at them. Black people got to think for self. You got to do for self. The first law uh, in the world is self preservation. And black people have been so silly to try to preserve everybody else except yourself. But I know you've been taught to be a slave. I understand that. And since you've been taught to be a slave in America and throughout the world, it's abnormal for you to think for yourself. Black people got to be the most selfish they ever been in their life. If you want to save yourself, these other groups don't care nothing about black people. All they want you to do is go out there and keep them in power politically so they can keep doing for these other people. See when these other people, you say, well, these other people run to this country. Why they run into this country? And it, and it, it and, but yeah, you, 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 at times feel you say we should do other. Well, because in this country, these other groups is getting higher than you. And because of your vote is why they're getting higher than you. Do you know, and I'm gonna cover on, on the other channel about home ownership rates. Do you know whites, Asians, and Hispanics have higher home ownership rates than black people right now? Black people have dropped even lower. If you don't own a home, you ain't got nothing almost. Because at any time they can raise the rent and now you stuck up a creek. Also, but it's also the, the lack of family too affects, affects our home ownership rates too. But that's a conversation of a different time. 
But these other groups now are passing black people up and they're passing you up because you voted in the Democrat party. And these people prioritize the Asian prioritize Hispanic prioritize, uh, $5 Indians prioritize all these other groups, LGBT over you and you get nothing. You get nothing out of the vote. You get nothing, but you're supposed to still carry your black behind back to that poll in November. And I know we got some stupid slaves in our community. I know run around here with that big, I voted sticker run around here telling people you got to get out there and vote. Okay. For what? Well, what are we voting for? Well, we just got to vote. Okay. What I'm gonna get out of it. You sound kind of radical. No, I'm not voting for Asians to get, get a bag and, and to get, they got more protection. How is it black people in the freaking global pandemic dealing with this freaking virus? Like I'm dealing with right now, take a risk of dealing with this virus. And, 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 and you sat up there and watching Asians get a hate crime bill, watching, watching Afghanistan people get money and this you go vote for, but that's supposed to be disinformation, right? No, that's a reality. And because we tell them black people, if you ain't getting nothing out of the deal, chill your nerves at home or do a protest vote. Either or either one, you're not giving a vote for the Democrat party. And you still got, even, even now you still got silly black folks that will come to my, my podcast still saying stupid things that I must be getting a check from the Republicans. See, I, I, I don't have the patience with you. And I'm telling mods, if you see them say that block them, we don't need them kind of people here, block them, get rid of them because those kind of people, they are, want to enforce slavery and plantation mentality in our community. They don't want black people to wake up. I believe people like that do not don't need to be talking on nowhere. I'm talking. You can listen in silence if you like to, that's fine. But no, no matter of fact, you're so worried about the Republicans giving me money. Why don't you tell the Democrats to cut me a check? They got it right. Tell them to cut me a check. Then you're so worried about the Democrats. They never cut me a check. So the Republicans did come by and cut me a check. Would I turn it down? Well, he said, Hey, uh, I want to donate to you, to your platform. You know I mean? I, 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 you know, your position on, uh, let's say, uh, Roe versus Wade or whatever. Uh, hey, I'm going to do it. I take donations where they come from. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not going to change what I say because I, you, you donated something. I, you, you can't control me with no money, but, but where, where's my Democrat friends to come support, come, come support our platform. What they at? They supposed to be for black people, right? What, what he at? So don't tell me nothing about no Republican, please. Ain't no Republican that gave me crap. But if they did give me something, I'll tell you too. I said, yeah, Republican kind of cut a cut check. It sure did. Well, where, where, where was all these ne- Negroes that, that's in the boulet? Why they ain't come cut me a check? I, only, I ain't got no loyalty to none of these, none of these Negroes out here. Please. Cause, cause I told y'all those black folks are about seven black people down the river for a check. And that is the easiest thing to do is sell out black people for a check. That is too easy. But I, I don't know. I can live myself doing that. I got to be me and be who I am because when I see people in the street, I, I stand 10 toes down on what I say to, and I say it to anybody's face, how I feel. But these Democrats going to keep on with this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And um, we got to just be, be ready. And the key is consistency folks. Consistency, consistency, consistency will make you win every time. When you keep the same message, the same energy, and don't back down on nothing they're telling you, you will win every time. Because they can't keep up with the lie forever. They can't. And these black folks in an office, I'm telling y'all, I would love to see that Congressional Black Caucus be decimated. I would love to see it be decimated. I would love to see it utterly be destroyed because people got all elected out because how I feel about it right now, you know, we're looking at all this money that Biden is throwing at Ukraine. He's a, he's a throwing, he's throwing millions. He's just throwing it at them. I mean, he's he's like, he's like, he going to the strip club, just throwing millions out there at at Ukraine while black people got nothing. 
We have nothing at all, but he just gonna cut another hundred and fifty million dollar check to Ukraine. Did y'all go vote for that? No. So don't tell me nothing about no Democrats. But y'all, let me know what you think about you know this for sure. You know, and, and once again, want to thank you for, for coming to our podcast. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, make sure you subscribe. You know, we we are we are back. You know, I'm, I'm back to work. So. You know, you can't, you can't hold, can't hold your brother down. You know, definitely. I got to stay working. Make sure you click that like button as well. Um, you know, if you like the show, please donate. It would be greatly appreciated if, if you do. And I know as many podcasts you can listen to throughout the internets and you chose to come here. We greatly appreciate that and see you next time.